Father, thank you so much for the opportunity we have to be here. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for being our God and just to, and providing us with so much, so many blessings. Father, we pray for Glenn. We pray for his recovery. We pray for Marlon. And as he uh, tries to get a second opinion, we pray for Gary as he's going to have surgery in a few weeks. And we just pray for those situations. We pray for Coy Lee and, uh, and the things that are going on with him and his family. Uh, we pray for uh, for Gerald and, and his thing with his with his, with his doctor. And pray for Frank and the boys. You know what's going on there, and and uh, and I just pray your hand would be on that family. And Father, be with Tim. Uh, he's going to have some decisions to make, and I just pray, Father, you give him guidance, and uh, that uh, he can make the right decisions with what he has to do. Uh, Father, thank you again for for all the things that that you do for us, and and the way you answer us, and the way you the way you interact with us. We look forward to being with you in. in for eternity uh, while we're here father help us to be the people that that we're supposed to be help us to be committed to you help us to be dedicated help us to be true disciples father and we thank you for the opportunities help us to be aware open our eyes the eyes our eyes and our heart that we might see those opportunities when they come uh, we, we're thankful for the opportunities that have come so far uh, now we're going back to the halfway house the guys are going to the prison and I just pray, Father, you continue to bless that effort. Now we're going to be able to go to the food bank, and that, uh, that'll be a, a way for people to bond from here, and I just thank you for that as well. Uh, Father, bless us as we study this evening. Help us to, to learn and grow, and help us, Father, to be able to apply these things to our lives and, and teach them to other folks. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. You've read, you've read chapter 1 a bunch of times. We went through chapter 1. took us seven weeks to go through chapter 1. What did you learn? Did you, and if you say I didn't learn nothing, then we're going to start over. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You know, what did you learn? Did you learn anything? Yeah, David. Angels are ministering spirits sent to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. Okay. All right. What else? What did, what did you learn from chapter one? I mean, you guys read it a bunch of times. How many of you read it more than three or four times? Okay. So reading it that many times, you should have picked up something, don't you think? What do you what did you pick up? Jesus is superior to the angels. Jesus is superior to the angels. Yes. Okay. Because all of this feeds off, chapter two feeds off it. See, every chapter is a building block in this letter. All right. Every chapter, you're gonna learn something new and something more that's gonna gonna feed off of the chapter you just went through. So you need to know, okay, what did I learn from chapter 1? Did I learn anything? Did I learn anything at all? Uh, he, he, he gave us details about who Jesus was. He, you know, that uh, you know we've seen he's the only one that can save us. There ain't anybody else can save you. You know, remember who he's writing to. Who's he writing to? Tell me who he's writing to. Jesus. Hebrew Christian. And what's their, what's their outlook on life? What those these people he's writing to? What's their outlook? What where what is their what's the danger that that they are involved in? Go back. Going back, going back to what they came from. These are these are Jewish Christians, Hebrew Christians, and some non-believing Jews. What is what's the system that they're under? That what they left? What's the system? The system of the law. Okay, you know it's like you know you leave a, a you know I mean you if you leave say a. Let's say you leave the Jehovah's Witness or you leave Catholicism or you leave leave Mormonism. You know, there's always going to be a pull maybe to go back to that, not as much as for them because this was their whole life. But, you know, for many people, you know, for Jehovah's Witness, it's their whole life. It is who they are. Their whole family many times is 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 steeped in that. And it's very difficult if you if you can pull them away to keep them because they look back and say, you know, there's attractive things over here. I want to go back. Well, that's what they're looking at. I want to go back, and he's trying to take, convince them what you have is better than what you what you left, because it it's founded on better promises, it's founded on a true savior, it has a real savior, not a guy like Moses or Elijah or Joshua, not those guys. These guys were just just human beings. They were just mortal men. You know, it's you know it says you know how how important then. If this is all true, is the is the salvation that he brings with him? How important would it have been? Now remember who who you who you are. If you're if he's writing to you, what was the what was the dynamic of your life? How important would that salvation be? Would it be enough to override 
your feelings of loss and maybe abandonment by your family, would it be enough to override that? Would that, that salvation be strong enough that you're in now to keep you planted where you are instead of going back? Would it? Yeah, yeah. Should, but for many of them it wasn't. That's why he writes this letter. Okay? Now, you know, we've learned that we've learned that the angels were not were not superior to him. Creation was not superior to him. Nobody else was superior to him. He was superior to everything. Everything. There wasn't anything that he is not over and above. This this guy that's called, that's given the title son. Okay? Now, you read chapter two, right? Did it make any sense to you when you read it? A little bit? Did it? Well, we're going to try to make sense out of it, okay? We're going to look at the first four verses. I don't know if we'll get through all of them, but we're going to look at the first four verses. I only got half an hour, so so we'll we'll see. We'll kind of we're not going to we're not going to buzz through this because it's important. All right? I'm going to read the first four. Come on in, guys. We're in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. Now, I'm going to tell you again, your assignment, all right, your assignment is to read chapter 2. If you're really gung-ho and functional, read chapter 1 and chapter 2. That's going to get to be a chore, I think, when we get to chapter 9. And I say, go ahead and read 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And chapter 9. Right now, read chapter 2, and I would love to see you read chapter 1 with it. Okay? And and let it flow for you. And read it enough so it really does start to flow. Look at what he says in chapter 2. All right? We must pay the most careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard, so that we do not drift away. For since the message spoken through angels was binding, and every violation and disobedience received as just punishment... How should we escape if we ignore such a great salvation? This salvation, which was first announced by the Lord, was confirmed to us by those who heard him. God also testified to it by signs, wonders, and various miracles, and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. Okay? Start in verse 1, line 1. What did he say? Because of what I just told you in chapter 1, you better pay careful attention. Remember when I tell you, when it says, therefore, when a, when a verse starts with, therefore, what do you need to know? What did he just say? What did he say before that I need to pay attention to? That's what he's saying here. He said, he said here, we must pay the most careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard. All right? Therefore, That's, huh? Therefore, it's a follow-up. It's a follow-up. That's right. It is a follow-up. You know, remember chapter 7 of Romans says, Paul says, the things I want to do, I cannot do. He said, I can't do them. He said, the, he said I, 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 I just can't. And he said, what a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body of sin and death? And in the next chapter, verse 1, chapter 8, says, therefore. That's it. He says, you better pay attention to what Jesus just said. Therefore, there is now no condemnation. So this, he's saying the same thing here. Pay careful attention, therefore, to what you just heard. And he's going to give you some reasons why. Would they need to be convinced that Jesus is good enough and strong enough and powerful enough to follow. Now, okay, I want to ask you a couple of questions first, and uh, and then we're going to go, move in on. Uh, why should any of us embrace this salvation? Why should any of us embrace this salvation? There's no other. Huh? There's no other. There is no other? You're convinced. Oh, yeah. Okay. Why do you pay careful attention, Vincent? Just because there's no other? Or what, what, what has convinced you that that you need to pay careful attention to this? Because well, it says here, and I see it in other people's lives. Okay. Already, but... So if he was writing this letter to you, to us, and he says in the chapter 2, verse 1, we must pay, therefore, close attention to what we have heard. That's what he said. He said, we must pay the most careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard, so that we do not drift away. Is it possible for people to drift away, for people to get unmoored, the rope come loose, and it bleeds through their hands? 
Have you seen it happen? Yeah. yeah. Has it happened to you? Yeah. Oh, yes. When, Many times. Because uh, we've come so, back. Mm -hmm. So we had drifted. Mm -hmm. I mean, we knew, but we still drifted. I asked Georgia that today. We talked about that day, and I said, I said, how in the world does that happen? How does that happen that, you know, that somebody knows, you know, you go up to somebody and, and you know, and, and I was talking about somebody specific. Her and I were talking about somebody specific. I said, how do you, how do you study and go to all of this and you know what the truth is? And then all of a sudden it just kind of filters through your hands. How does that happen? So that I don't make them say, how does it happen that, that it just kind of runs through my hand? You know, I'm, I know how a boat gets loose. You don't tie it good enough. Waves come, beat it against the dock, and it can get loose. Okay? I mean, you got boat. You know, you know how easy it is. I mean, how you need to be careful, you know, to, to tie it off right. So that's what he's saying. He said, if this is that important, if it's that important, and you decided that that's, it's that important, you know, it, 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 he said, we will pay careful attention then to what we've heard. Now, what we've heard for us today and for them as well they knew because they'd been taught these things, and we'll look at that as we go through this. They've been taught these, but here in chapter one, he taught them about Jesus, that Jesus is the man to follow. Well, we know that, but a lot of people in the world believe that Jesus is the guy to follow. They just don't follow him the right way, or it's not as big a deal. And sometimes, you know, I, I, I get, you know, well, I'll go to church today, and maybe I won't go next week. I'll, I'll do it this week. Next week, we'll go to the lake, okay? To try to get your kids to go and be happy about the situation. So he said, ah, you know what? We'll, we'll, go, we'll go to the lake today, but we're going to go to church next week and think that's appropriate. If I live long enough, I'll go back. Yeah. If I live Did you ever think that? If I live, yeah. If I, if I, knowing you're wrong sometimes, you think, if I, if I, if I just, I'm going to live for a while, you know, and, and mm -hmm. I'll go back later. If I, live long I got time. time. I'll make it right. I got time. Your situation was because of your wife got sick, right? And, and other things. Uh, but but predominantly there at the end, there for the last year, your wife was oh, sick and she couldn't come and you weren't going to leave her because you couldn't leave her. It wasn't a year. It was like eternity to me. It was like 10 years. I understand. Yeah, but uh, I understand. But uh, I, I, I admit one thing. I also use, I use some of that for excuses. Sure. Sure. I really did. I'm not going to say I did yeah. it. Let me ask you something for y'all and for him. When you got that to that place, why was Jesus not good enough? Why was he not important enough to override the excuses? Because these guys are, are they're coming up with the same excuses, guys. You know, well, my mama is really suffering under the, this rule, this tyranny. I need to go back to help her. There was all kinds of excuses, maybe not for our culture today, but for their culture, they had the excuse just like we have. We just have different excuses. The devil. The devil. The devil. The devil. He's always showing you something. Hey, he, even right now, if I'm going through the, the Facebook or, you know, there's stuff that I shouldn't be looking at. And, mm -hmm. and I, I just keep on going. Yeah. They do that, you know. I got rid of an app on my phone the other day. Well, see. That's, I, I canceled. I got rid of it. I said, this is not healthy. And, I'm not going to be good for you. I'm getting rid of it. Talking for myself, that's what happened to me. Mm -hmm. I used everything for an excuse mm -hmm. not to come. And, uh, let me ask you. Go ahead, Pam. What well, it has to do with some of the people you associate okay. with your circle. And okay. If they're not of the Christian faith and that, they can influence. Let, let me. Your Satan's friends. not stupid, guys. He's not going to use the same criteria on you today that he used then. He's not stupid. He's going he's gonna to morph through the whole the whole social structure and figure out what he can say to you that he couldn't say to them because it wasn't appropriate then, wasn't applicable then, but what it is now. Somebody had their hand up. Yeah, Bobby? I, uh, I think, looking back, I think that I should have known better. Mm -hmm. It was like something would always jump in the way, and now I look back and I see... It, and I truly see, I believe it was Satan bringing up something, something, mm -hmm. like, like a problem here. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll take care of that, and, and, and then I'll get better. 
Okay. It's, just, it's like a domino effect. Okay. And the next thing you know, in your heart, you just kind of give up. You know, if you, if you, uh, you know, we have, we have, we have a lot of car wrecks in our society. Would you say that's true? Yes. Why do you think a lot of them happen? Inattention, not paying attention. I saw somebody just the other day, you know, in fact, it was this morning and, and he was a couple of cars ahead of me and he was, and he was, uh, he was just, his tires were just on the line and this car was next to him was that couldn't go any quick. Cause there was a, there was a median there. He can't go nowhere. And I'm thinking, and then pretty soon, pretty soon that car got a little far and he pulled over and I said, well, that's good. You pulled over cause that's where you wanted to go anyway. And then got over and we looked and they were, they were looking at something on their phone, you know, and I'm going, you know, if you don't pay better attention and all of us have done it and all of us need to stop doing that stuff. Okay. We all do it, you know, and it's, it's, how do I pay attention to what's going on around me so that this doesn't happen to me? What if, he's telling them, Hey, you need to focus your eyes on Jesus. Remember Jesus, is a new phenomena for them. It's not a new phenomenon for us. But it's a new phenomenon for them. For me, coming into the Church of Christ was an absolute blew my world up. Talk about a new phenomenon. Man, it was it was nothing I'd ever seen before. Just singing harmony. I'm going, what the heck is this, man? I don't know what that is. I don't know what any of this is because I've never experienced that before. And so my whole world came was was unraveling. Everything that I knew was unraveling. But, you know, for these people, think about it. They've come from the law, and they've come to an acceptance and an obedience to Christ. Was it different? Huh. You'll see. You'll see. As we go through it, you'll see how different it was and how similar it was at the same time. So I just want you to pay attention to what is it that I need to do in my life so that I don't drift to what? Yes? You started out with saying that how... How does somebody just wake up and, and they drift away? Uh -huh. It's not boom like that. It is those little things. And if you don't take, take care of each little thing, that little thing gets bigger. And bigger Let me ask you something. Bigger. How how difficult does it become when you have health issues and you can't come? It's hard. 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 It's very hard. You were not here this past week because you had health issues. It gets difficult, especially if, if the weeks start to compound themselves. That, and it's very hard. And, and you have to focus. It's very frustrating. have to stay focused. Hold, hold on a minute, Gerald. Go ahead, Lee. I think it's because we become comfortable where we are at, at our, in our life. Mm -hmm. We get to a point where we just feel comfortable where we are, okay. and that's where the most danger comes okay. We Ger feel it's okay. And yes. it's, it's not nothing that really drives us anything is we just feel comfortable that guys that's why it's so important that you focus on jesus and really learn about him and, and learn how is this dynamic gonna gonna make it better in my life go ahead gerald it's like uh, your body like that you're uh you, you get up in that, that morning you, you you're, you're, you're all planning like that you're going okay this is wednesday night like that I'm going to church like that and stuff and then automatically something happens mm -hmm. and right like, like I told Tracy the, uh, today, like that this morning, I, I when I woke up this morning, I I, um, I text Tracy, I said good morning, like that. I meet you over there, like that. I get halfway there, my leg uh, uh, locked up, uh, locked up, and almost threw me straight down to the uh, ground. Yeah, you know, understand something? Like I told you, Satan's not stupid. No, he, he's not. Satan's not stupid. When you start to when you start to go, start to focus where you need to focus, he's gonna try to unfocus. He's gonna put a, he's gonna put a fog in your life and try to make it where you can't see clear. That's what he's gonna do. That's what he does. And we need to be smart enough to recognize that's what's happening. Okay? I think having good people around us, you know, John and I are gonna go, we're going to eat lunch tomorrow with Fred Lynch and, and the three of us have a great time. We go. It's a it's a it's a neat it's a neat camaraderie that we have that we get to go do. I knew the one over your mind. Yeah, that's a that's a plus too. That's a plus too. We don't have we don't have to buy because the next time the next time we go, I've got to buy. So you and so you and so, so you and Fred will say, hey, but we don't have to buy. So, but, but yeah, in that situation, you get to you get to pick where you're going, but you also have to pay. So, but anyway, it, the 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 point here is that is that focus on what needs to be. Chapter one told you about Christ. 
He hadn't changed, guys. Christ ain't moving nowhere, okay? He don't move away. We're the ones that move away from him. He don't move away from us, okay? He stays He stays put where he, where he's where he's supposed to be. We we don't. All right? We're the ones moving around and letting Satan move us around. All right? Now, look at look at what else he says. Chapter 2, we're in Hebrews, guys. Chapter 2. We must pay the most careful attention therefore to what we have heard so that we do not drift away. All right? We've talked about that. Now, look at what he says. For since the message spoken through angels with binding and every violation of disobedience received a just punishment, how shall we escape if we ignore such a great salvation? All right, I want to I want to cut this up a little bit. All right, he's talking about the law. Since the law, the message that was given by angels, and I want to take us to a couple of places. I want you to look at the book of Acts. We're going to look at Acts chapter seven. All right, why don't you turn over there, Acts chapter seven. Now, this text. Two and three, there is a certainty of judgment. Okay, remember who he's talking to. He's writing to these Jewish Christians and these unbelieving Jews. All right, and he said there is an absolute certain of ju certainty of judgment for them and for us. Got it? That means if you don't do this right, judgment will come. Okay, there ain't just once saved, always saved. Yo, know, if you don't watch out, you will fall. Now. Look at chapter eight, chapter Acts, chapter seven. Now, I'm not going to read all this. But we're going to start in verse 37. Now, this is Stephen talking to the people that are fixing to kill him. All right, they're going to stone him to death in just a short minute. They're going to stone him to death. They're going to get so angry. That they're gonna they're gonna slobber and drill and gnash their teeth at him and they're gonna throw rocks and kill him. All right, he is one of the he is one of the deacons in the church, in, in Jerusalem. Listen to what he says, verse. 10. This is the Moses who told the Israelites, God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your own people. He was in the assembly in the wilderness with the angel who spoke to him on Mount Sinai and with our ancestors, and he received living words to pass on to us. Who did he receive them from? From that angel. Okay, now look at verse 53. Well, start in verse 51. You stiff-necked people, your hearts and ears are still uncircumcised. You are just like your ancestors. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Now remember, he's standing in front of a bunch of people that got guns pointed at him. Okay? And they got live rounds in the, in the chamber. And this is what he, and, and he said... You stiff-necked people, your hearts and ears are still uncircumcised. You are just like your ancestors. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Was there ever a prophet your ancestors did not persecute? They even killed those who predicted the coming of the righteous one, and now you have betrayed and murdered him. You who have received the law that was given through angels, but have not obeyed it. Okay, now go back to Hebrews. What does Stephen tell us? About that law. How did it come to them? It was administered to them through angels. All right? Stephen told them twice. All right? Now, he said, For since the message spoken through angels was binding, was it was the law binding on them? If you go listen to our podcast and what we've been doing through the book of Leviticus, the book of Numbers, you'll, you'll absolutely see they, they uh, how many times have we, have we talked about, Lee, Rebellion, rebellion, rebellion. They rebelled over and over and over. You understand what rebellion is? When I decide I don't want to do what you tell me to do. That's pretty much what it is. When you decide. Listen, I want to take you back there, and I want, we're just going to look at a couple of texts, one in Leviticus and one in Numbers. I want you to see something what it said. Now, what does it say right before you turn over there? What does it say here? He said, it was finding in every violation and disobedience received as just punishment. Okay, you understand what he's talking about. He said, this message that was given to you by angels, all right, it was it was given to Moses, he gave it to you, and it was binding. Yeah, John? I, I think we need to really focus, though, that it was, it was delivered by angels. Yes, it was delivered by angels. How was it written? Who wrote it? God wrote it. Yeah. With his finger. With his finger. Okay. On Mount Sinai, he wrote it with his finger, all right? God gave it, but he sent angels to, it was like, the, the message that was given was given by God, and the messengers were angels. That's right. All right? Our message was given by God and sent by God and written by God, okay? Because Jesus is God. So 
is the message and the messenger better? Okay, you're going to get, we're going to get into that in a minute. But the message and the messenger are better, all right? But for them, he said, every violation is going to be is going to be punished. Look at what he says again. He says, and every violation of disobedience received its just punishment. Now, I want you to look at Leviticus chapter 24. Leviticus 24. Leviticus chapter 24. Now, this is about a blasphemer, this text. And it's about someone who's blasphemed God. And, and we're going to start in verse 13. 24 verse 13. Got it? Then the Lord said to Moses, Take the blasphemer outside the camp. All those who heard him are to lay their hands on his head, and the entire assembly is to stone him. Say to the Israelites, Anyone who causes their, curses their God will be held responsible. Anyone who blasphemes the name of the Lord is to be put to death. The entire assembly must stone them. Whatever, whether foreigner or native-born, when they blaspheme the name, they're to be put to death. I'm, I'm going to go back. Y'all, this is what he said. And every violation of disobedience received a just punishment. What did he say? What did he say here? If you blaspheme God, if you curse God's name, and you're and they hear you and you're caught, we're going to kill you. That's justice. That's justice. We're going to stone you to death. The whole camp. There's two million of them. Okay? I don't know if it was just the young boys, if it was the men. I don't know. But there's too many, two million of them. They're going to lay their hands on him. They're going to take him outside the camp, and they're going to kill him. All right? Now, look at Numbers. Numbers chapter 15. All right? We're going to start in verse 30. Numbers chapter 15, verse 30. This is the, I'm, I'm trying to get you to understand, and the, and the Old Testament is full of this, okay? But anyone who sins defiantly, whether native-born or foreigner, blasphemes the Lord and must be cut off from the people of Israel. Because they have despised the Lord's word and broken his command, they must surely be cut off. Their guilt remains on them. While the Israelites were in the wilderness, a man was found gathering wood on the Sabbath day. Okay? Got it? Those who found him gathering wood brought him to Moses and Aaron in the whole assembly, and they kept him in custody because it was not clear what should be done to him. Then the Lord said to Moses, The man must die. The whole assembly must stone him outside the camp. So the assembly took him outside the camp and stoned him to death as the Lord commanded Moses. All right? What What did he say? What What did he say? Huh? What did he say? Huh? What do you say? All right. Keep going. Keep going. How serious was violation and disobedience? You know, we can go back to Exodus. We can go back to Exodus where, where they make a golden calf when Moses is on the mountain too long. He's on the mountain. They don't know where he's going. Well, he's probably dead. So we're just going gonna to make. So they got, they got Aaron. You're going to make us a god. So he gets all the gold. And he and he fashions he fashions a golden calf. Okay? Moses comes down with the law, and what does the law say? Have no other gods before me. Did it not say that? That's the yep. first command. Have no other gods before me. And what have they done? Moses said, sound like war in a camp. Say that's not war. God said that's not war. That's party. They're partying. <laughs> you know what he did? Who's gonna stand with me? Who's gonna and all the tribe of Levi stands with him? And they kill 30. 33,000, 3,500 of them. 3,500 of them die at the hands of their own people because God said, how dare you? How dare you? How, how important, how, how serious was it to disobey this message that was brought to them by angels? Every violation, every disobedience was dealt with. You know, I'm telling you, you know, we, we have, we have, we have, uh, Snail pace through this thing on Wednesday, on our podcast. You know, sometimes it seems like we're never going to get anywhere with some of some of the classes we have. But if you haven't learned, if you if you watch it and haven't learned anything, is that that when 
when you disobeyed God in the Old Testament, in the old system, it was swift, painful, immediate. Immediate. But there was times for other people. Remember, we just did this about the Midianites, and he told them back and when, he said, don't deal with them. They're time, they're, they're, the fullness of their sin has not yet arrived. He's going to give them plenty of time, give them time to repent. They don't. And when he finally says, go get them, these were the same folks, the Moabites, that was the same folks, the same folks that went after Balaam, and Balaam gave them, gave them reports, said, this is how you, this, you want to defeat the Israelites? This is how you do it. Send some women in there. Let them marry these women. That's how you do it. And God, and, and God said, I'm done with them. I'm done with them. So, you know, when you look at Ezra, and Ezra comes to the comes back to Jerusalem after captivity for 70 years. You know, he finds, what does he find? They've married foreign wives. They've been marrying women from all around them. And he says, get rid of the women in the camp. Get rid of them. Send the wives and the children. Send them away. Go. What do you think would happen today if we started we if we adopted practice like that? Solomon never got rid of him. He no, nope, he, he, yeah. he did not. He did not. He didn't. He didn't get rid of his own wives. He didn't. He had seven hundred of them, or three hundred of them, and seven hundred concubines. What did he need with a thousand women? I have enough trouble with one. You know, I don't know what would I do with what would I do with seven hundred of them or thousand of them. You need to move on. I need to move on. <laughs> I know how to hide the body. <laughs> anyway, go back to Hebrews. Go back to what? Go back to Hebrews. He said, now remember what we talked about. All right. You know, John said it a while ago. God wrote it. God wrote it. All right. All right. God wrote this thing, okay? He wrote it. He gets sent it by angels. They administered it. They, they delivered it. And he said, everything in there, you better obey. You better obey. We're going to see in chapter 3, it says they didn't believe it. So they didn't obey. That's what God said. He said the same today. If you say you believe and you don't obey, then you don't believe. That's what he said. So, you know, when you have, when you have a message... Sent by messengers that are not up to the messenger that we have. The message isn't. The law wasn't. He's, that's what he's trying to tell them. We have to understand that the message that we have was sent by a greater messenger, and it is binding. It is, it is, it is the we can't get any better. Not going to go any better. And then look at what he said. How should we escape if we ignore such a great salvation? What what does he what does he mean? Tell me what what do you think he means? If that message if that message before brought that kind of judgment, and it was in fear to what we have, what do you think judgment's going to be like come judgment day? What do you think it's going to be like? You think it's going to be worse? I think we can't even begin to imagine what judgment's going to be like. I think that narrow. Uh path it's going to be like a rabbit trail compared to a 12 lane trail. I think you're I think you're absolutely right and what saddens me is is that we have people in this building that that's what they're doing going down that trying to go down that 12 lane highway instead of going down a rabbit trail I'm just telling you like I said before you heard me say there are people that are going to come over here on Sunday morning going to die and go to hell and they're going to die happy because they believe everything's good they haven't decided what it means to follow this guy, what it means to follow this way, what, what does it mean to follow this message the way it was supposed to be followed. He said, if that message had that severe consequence, what do you think this will be like? How do you ignore, how do you escape? You know, look at what he says again. He said, how shall we escape if we ignore such a great salvation? Now, I'm going to tell you, I want to, I want to finish something here. I want you to turn to 1 Peter chapter 1. And then well, I'm going to be through with this with these two verses. I figured it'd take me a couple of weeks to get through this. We're going to look at verse four next week. But look at what he said, verse ten, chapter second, first Peter chapter one, verse ten. Look what it says concerning this salvation. Is that not what he's talking about over here in Hebrews? He's talking about the salvation that Jesus brought to us. Concerning the salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that was to come to you searched intently with the greatest care. 
trying to find out the times and circumstances in which the Spirit of Christ in them was pointing when he predicted the sufferings of the Messiah and the glories that would follow. Okay? It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves but you when they spoke of the things that have now been told you by those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Okay? Got it? Now look at the last line. Look at the next line. What does it say? Even angels long to look at these things. They brought the first message. The mess, angels brought the first message, and now they have a message they didn't bring, they don't understand, and they long to understand. The prophets that, that talked about it long to understand what you take for granted. We get to read Hebrews chapter 1 and chapter 2 and say, no big deal. And we don't, and we don't, we don't take it seriously. We don't put the same emphasis on it. How dare us do that? How dare us? You don't think he's going to hold us accountable? You don't think if he held them again, you don't think he's going to hold us accountable? I think we've got our I think we've got our facts all twisted up. We don't think that. Maybe right. more than they. <laughs> Maybe may more, more accountable than, than they the ones before. The understand, goes. I believe in grace and mercy. I do. I you know I do. I believe in grace. I do. But if we ignore this and we drift away, he will he gives us every opportunity to come back because he don't want any of us to perish. He wants us all to come to repentance. But we have to be uh, we have to be focused on what is it that I need to do every single day. That has to be more important than anything else we do. Yeah, David. If if somebody uh, decides to get baptized and they have so much heat in their heart, mm -hmm. and God knows they're never going to get rid of that. Mm -hmm. That's between them and God. Yeah. What's between me and them is I'm going to study with them and work with them. And, and I'm going to understand. Now, understand something, guys. Let me tell you, be very, very clear. We're way too quick sometimes to pass judgment on somebody and not give them enough time to change and to grow. That's not what I'm saying. Okay. What I'm saying is, is their baptism, could it be considered illegitimate if God knows that that person is going to go till death? I've had people like that. Hate I've, had people, I've had people like that before that, that you know, but I don't want to sit in judgment of people. I, I don't want. I don't want to sit. I'm not. I'm not judging. I'm asking you what. I think if they don't ever change, it, it's illegitimate because he says to repent. Yeah. No. And if you don't repent, I don't think. I think it's illegitimate. In a time of battle, a lot of times uh, we've always heard the reference to a uh, foxhole by baptism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know. Well, you saw that in the jail. Everybody in jail is a, a member of the church. Everybody in jail is a godly man. They all want to be baptized. They all want to get out and they go be baptized. Every one of them. All right? And then they get out and you can't run fast enough to catch them. All right, we're good. We'll see you next week. <laughs>